Carbon has been detected in a galaxy that existed 350 million years after the Big Bang. An international team of astronomers using the James Webb Space Telescope has discovered carbon in a young galaxy in the early universe. This galaxy existed 350 million years after the Big Bang. These discoveries upend what we know about the first galaxies. The early universe was composed almost entirely of hydrogen, the simplest element, with small amounts of helium and lithium. Every other element we observe today was created inside stars. When stars explode as supernovae, the elements they produce circulate around the area, seeding the next generation of stars. With each new generation of stars and the material created after their explosion, there were more and more elements heavier than hydrogen and helium in the universe. In astronomy, elements heavier than hydrogen or helium are classified as metals. Being able to trace their origins and evolution could help astronomers understand how we went from a universe composed almost entirely of two chemical elements to the incredible complexity we see today. In recent observations using the James Webb Space Telescope JWST, astronomers detected a key building block for life, at least as we know it, at the dawn of time in a galaxy that existed 350 million years after the Big Bang, turning it upside down. What we know about the first galaxies the description and results of the observations have been accepted for publication in the journal Astronomy and Astrophysics, and are currently available in the AR14 preprint database. A cloud of carbon in a distant galaxy that emerged just 350 million years after the Big Bang marks the earliest detection of an element other than hydrogen in the universe. Carbon is a fundamental element in the evolution of the universe. It can create dust grains that clump together, eventually forming the first planetesimals and the earliest planets. But carbon is also crucial to the emergence of life on Earth. The first stars are the holy grail of chemical evolution, said lead author Dr. Francesco Di Eugenio of the University of Cambridge. Because they consisted only of primordial elements, they behaved completely differently than modern stars. By studying how and when the first metals were formed inside stars, we can establish a time frame for the earliest steps on the path that led to the emergence of life, he added. Previous research suggested that carbon began to form in large quantities relatively late, about a billion years after the Big Bang, said CO author Professor Roberto Maiolino also from the University of Cambridge. In new observations, we have discovered that carbon was formed much earlier, it may even be the oldest metal of all, he added. Until recently, it was thought that the process of producing and spreading heavy elements throughout the cosmos was a long process, involving many generations of stars before elements heavy enough to form planets became widely available. However, a new discovery has challenged this assumption. The team used JWST to observe a very distant galaxy, GSC-12, one of the most distant galaxies ever observed. It was formed just 350 million years after the Big Bang, over 13 billion years ago. This galaxy is compact and has a low mass, about 100,000 times smaller than the Milky Way. It's just the embryo of a galaxy as we observe it, but it could have evolved into something quite large, about the size of the Milky Way. For such a young galaxy, it's quite massive, Di Eugenio said. Scientists used the near-infrared spectrograph NIR spec, on board JWST to obtain a spectrum of radiation from the young galaxy. Different elements leave different chemical fingerprints in the spectrum, 
which allow scientists to determine the chemical composition of the object under study, in this case a galaxy. Analysis of this spectrum revealed a carbon signature. There are also traces of oxygen and neon, although further observations will be necessary to confirm the presence of these elements. We were surprised to see carbon in such an early universe because the earliest stars were thought to have produced much more oxygen than carbon, but the fact that it appears so early tells us that the first stars may have operated very differently, Maolino said. According to some models, when the earliest stars exploded as supernovae, they may have released less energy than initially expected. In this case, carbon, which was in the star's outer shell and was less gravitationally bound than oxygen, was able to escape more easily and spread throughout the galaxy while a large amount of oxygen collapsed into the black hole. Carbon is the basis of life as we know it, and it is not necessarily true that life must have evolved much later in the universe. Life may have appeared earlier, although if it exists elsewhere in the universe, it may have evolved very differently than here on Earth, D. Eugenio noted. Elephants call each other using individual names. Scientists used artificial intelligence algorithms to study the sounds made by two herds of African elephants in Kenya. Analysis of the recordings revealed that wild elephants call each other using individual, specific sounds, which is similar to calling each other by name scientists found wild african elephants loxodonta africana address each other with name-like calls which is rare among animals scientists from colorado state university csu in a publication published in the journal nature ecology and evolution described their research using artificial intelligence in which they determined that elephant sounds contain a component identifying the recipient, resembling a name. When the scientists played back the recorded sounds, the elephants responded vividly to them. Names are universal across human cultures and languages. They are part of our identity and help us communicate with each other, but giving names is considered uniquely human. At least that was the case until recently. Dolphins and parrots call each other by name, imitating the distinctive sound made by the recipient, said lead author Michael Pardo of CSU and Save the Elephants, a research and conservation organization based in Kenya. In contrast, our data suggests that elephants do not rely on imitations of callers to address each other which is more similar to the way human names work, he added. Scientists working in Kenya used artificial intelligence algorithms to confirm what they had already suspected based on observations, that elephant calls contain a name-like component. It is through this that they identify the recipient of their vocalization. When the researchers identified the mentioned component in the recordings and started playing it, the recipients responded to the sounds directed at them by speaking or moving towards the source of the sounds. Calls intended for other elephants elicited less response. Elephants, like humans, are socially complex and highly communicative. They function within family units, social groups, and the larger clan structure, much like the complex social networks maintained by humans. Researchers speculate that similar needs are likely to have led to vocal labeling, calling other individuals abstract sounds, in both species. This is likely a case where we are feeling similar pressures, largely driven by complex social interactions, said George Wittemir of CSU and chair of Save the Elephants Science Board. That's one of the exciting things about this study. It gives us some insight into the possible reasons why we developed these abilities, he added, acknowledging that the use of vocal labels indicates that elephants may be capable of abstract thought. In addition to vocalization, elephants also communicate with each other through sight, smell, and touch. 
Researchers indicate that their sounds convey a lot of information, including the identity of the person calling, age, gender, emotional state and behavioral context. Elephant vocalizations cover a wide spectrum of frequencies, including infrasound, which is below the range audible to the human ear. Elephants can coordinate group movements over long distances using these vocalizations. In the study, scientists analyzed the sounds made by elephants in Kenya's Samburu Reserve and Ambosli National Park recorded between 1986 and 2022. In total, approximately 470 separate sounds were recorded from 101 senders, which were addressed to 117 recipients. The researchers only included calls directed at a single elephant whose recipient could be identified. CSU's Kurt Fristrup has developed a novel signal processing technique to detect subtle differences in sound structure. He and Pardo then trained a machine learning model to correctly identify which elephant the call was directed at, based solely on its acoustic characteristics. Our discovery that elephants do not simply imitate the sound associated with the individual they are calling was most intriguing. The ability to use arbitrary sound labels for other individuals suggests that there may be other types of labels or descriptors in elephant calls, Fristrup said. Elephants are expressive animals and their reactions are easy to read for people who know them. When the researchers played pre-recorded samples of vocalizations, the elephants responded energetically to the recordings of their friends and family members calling to them, but they did not respond particularly enthusiastically or move in the direction of calls directed at others, showing that they recognized their names. The study also found that elephants, like humans, do not always address each other by name in conversation. Calling an individual by name was more common over long distances or when adults were talking to the young. Adults were more likely to use names than their young counterparts, suggesting that this particular skill may take years to learn. Scientists said much more data is needed to isolate the names in calls and determine whether elephants also name other things they interact with, such as food, water, or different places. The study authors emphasize that new insights into elephants' cognitive and communication abilities strengthen the case for their protection. Elephants are classified as endangered, mainly due to poaching and habitat loss. Due to their size, these animals need a lot of space and can be destructive to property and dangerous to people. A huge 4,000-year-old building was discovered in Crete years. Near the town of Kisamus in Crete, archaeologists discovered a huge monument from about 4,000 years ago. Years. The structure, approximately 48 meters in diameter, consists of eight overlapping stone circles that appear to form a maze. The monument was probably built by representatives of the Minoan civilization, Construction workers came across the vast, ancient structure while preparing the area for the construction of a new airport, specifically radar systems for the airport. They discovered the outlines of the monument at the top of the mountain, approximately 500 m above sea level. Papora Hill, located northwest of Kisamus town. Alarmed by the discovery, archaeologists began excavations, revealing details of the building. This monumental structure covers an area of approximately 1,800 square meters. It consists of eight superimposed stone rings with an average thickness of 1.4 meters and an estimated height of 1.7 meters, built at different levels of elevation. So far, Researchers have uncovered two probable entrances to the structure, which appears to form a labyrinth. In the center of the structure there are the outlines of a circular building with a diameter of about 15 meters, which was divided into four parts. 
This building is surrounded by walls cut by passages to further districts. As excavations progress, the monument's labyrinthine structure is revealed. The circles are connected with each other by narrow holes. Archaeologists do not yet know what the building was used for. Excavations are still ongoing and the monument has no known equivalents. For now, experts speculate that it could have been used for ritual or religious purposes. A large amount of animal bones and pieces of pottery were found within it. Although the purpose of the building is not yet known, it was certainly some type of municipal building that stood out in the entire area. The structure may have been used periodically for ritual ceremonies involving the consumption of food, wine, and perhaps offerings. Its size, architectural layout, and careful construction required significant work, specialized knowledge and solid administration, the Greek Ministry of Culture wrote in a statement, adding that the building is a unique and extremely interesting find. The ministry also noted that the find will remain in its place and a different location will be found for the radar station. According to archaeologists, the building was mainly used between 2000 and 1700 BC and was built around the time that the first palaces in Crete were being built, including those at Knossos and Phaistos. This suggests that the monument was built by builders from the Minoan civilization, famous for its lavish palaces, extravagant art, and mysterious writing system. The Minoan culture, its name comes from the mythical Cretan ruler, Minos, developed in Crete in the period from approximately 3000 to 1200 BC, and its influence reached the eastern coast of Sicily, mainland Greece, and the western coast of Anatolia, southwestern Turkey. According to some researchers, the beginning of its end was a powerful volcanic eruption on the island of Santorini. According to others, it was an invasion of Greeks representing the so-called Mycenaean culture. Greece's rich cultural heritage often leads to conflicts of interest during construction projects. So far, 35 archaeological sites have been discovered during work on the new Castelli Airport and its road connections alone.